So it was October 1991, and I was driving to Bozeman for the first time with a native Montanan I would ultimately marry. Uh, at the time of the incident, um, it was dark. We'd been on the road for a long time. And I was really just taking over the wheel for the first time that day. Now, the first thing you need to understand about me is that I wasn't a very experienced driver at that point. I had spent the first 20 years of my life in places like this, Miami-Dade County, Florida, population 5.5 million people, where my friends managed to do all the driving, and New York City, uh, population 8.9 million people, where, as you know, having a car is pretty much pointless. So when the coyote crossed in front of my headlights, you could certainly chalk it up just to inexperience that caused me to swerve to miss the coyote and then overcorrect and fling us into the ditch upside down with the coyote taking off safely on his way. We were fine, by the way. And certainly inexperience was a part of it, but I think it was more than just bad driving. Now, this happened right outside of Sheridan, Wyoming, and uh, I was actually the first of many lessons that I, a very urban girl, would learn as I settled into my life in Montana, the most rural place I had ever been. At every stop along the way between Sheridan and Bozeman, because we did finish our trip, I kept hearing the same advice. You really should have just hit the thing. <laughs> And uh, I should have. I know that now. We were really lucky that there was someone behind us that could stop and help. But what I learned is that in more rural places, you can't always count on someone being around to help you. And you can't afford to worry about the cute little animal at times like that. In a really rural place, uh, you're more isolated, and a person has to be prepared to scrap their way through. I mean, people will certainly enthusiastically help you if they are there, but you have to be prepared for their absence, right? It was the first clashing of rural and urban for me, but literally, <laughs> but it certainly would not be the last. So here's some proof of my personal evolution. Uh, this is me uh, in Florida on the left there, uh, the last time I probably wore high heels for more than a single hour in a day. And the Montanaized version of me, I certainly have uh, changed on the outside, but I've uh, changed a lot more on the inside, and part of that is age for sure. But. Um, I do feel that Montana has shaped me. So here are 10 lessons that I, a very urban girl, have learned living in a rural place and that have inspired me to work for One Montana, an organization that reminds us how interconnected we all, rural and urban are and helps those groups work together, a place that lets me blend who I am with what I do. So lesson number one, hit the coyote. <laughs> Uh, or rather realize that sometimes you have to make different choices when you are not sure anyone else is going to be along to help. Uh, people living in really rural places are shaped to a degree by that isolation, uh, and you have to appreciate that. I've learned to respect that perspective. Lesson number two for me was flowers have names. Yes, I knew that uh, there were roses and daisies when I lived in the city, but they were kind of like names of designer jeans at the mall. Uh, being in Montana, I found value in knowing the names of Indian paintbrush and glacier lilies and bear grass as a way of marking where I'd been. Uh, existing with the land really changes how you, how you feel about it. Lesson number three is people see you. Make sure you see them. When I moved here, I was really good at the city walk. You know, know where you're going, don't look anyone in the eye. Uh, but you miss a lot of great things and a lot of great people when you do that. Uh, when you acknowledge that someone exists, uh, it gives you a chance to really know who they are, and you should have never assume you, you know what you're going to find. Lesson number four is size is relative. No matter how small you think you are, there is always someone smaller who is sure that you are throwing your weight around. Um, I get insulted when people from New York or D.C. ask if we have decent cell service. I am sure that I come across equally as out of touch when I go to a smaller community than Bozeman. Lesson number five is signs help. Um, the Bozeman students, high school students who participated in our rural urban exchange with Harleton learned this. Uh, they found amazing things in Harleton they didn't know were there, like this thriving honeybee business, because you don't notice it when you drive through. It may seem silly that you need a sign to navigate a small town, but if you don't have it, people will pass you by. Lesson number six for me was uh, my food really isn't grown out right outside my door. Uh, when I moved here, I had that idealized version that the uh, crops and animals I saw in the fields were the same thing I was buying at the store, and I was really surprised to find out that wasn't true, and even less true in a really rural space. Uh, globalization has disconnected those old connections. 
Lesson number seven is when rural and urban do clash, uh, it's not permanent. Uh, for example, the time we were driving to White Sulphur Springs and the uh, semi crossing in the other lane hit a pile of fresh cow pies, which then splashed all over our windshield and froze in the winter weather. Um, yeah, it really hit the fan, but you know, it washed off. Uh, disagreements don't stick. One person's playground, this is the next lesson, is another person's home ground, but they really are the same and common ground. We've learned this with the work we've been doing with landowners and sportsmen. When you have that conversation about where you actually agree, a lot of good action happens, and it's a lot of fun to watch people figure that out. Lesson number nine, keep it simple. I try so hard to think of eloquent ways of talking about ridging the rural-urban divide. This sign right outside of Glendive, Montana says it in two words. Now, be nice doesn't mean that you ignore differences or try not to rock the boat, but it says respect one another, heed one another. You will still get to your destination, I promise. And of course, lesson number 10 for me was we really aren't all that different. Uh, you can get pretty isolated even in Bozeman, just as much as I was uh, from a city of 8 million people. Um, but at the end of the day, you realize we all really do want the same things, and we really need one another to get there which is why I love working for an organization that reminds us of that, that rural places have to be healthy if they're gonna give us the food and the recreation and the, the power that we need for our urban centers. And urban places have the markets and the healthcare and the education, things that rural places need to remain vibrant. I mean, it really is a win-win situation. So I urge you to get out there. Montana's a big place, but you can still get to rural places pretty easily. Even if you think you know what you're going to find, go anyway. Find 10 people and 10 things that you never knew. And if you do find yourself in a place where you do have to hit the coyote, well then, please at least be nice. <laughs>